eats to live. And very shortly after he first appeared on the face of this planet, man began cultivating the land and raising livestock in order to guarantee his food supply. Today, the range of food products is truly staggering. Traditional varieties of vegetables and fruits have been complemented by new types and strains. A different kind of harvest is the fruit of the sea, an incredible assortment of fish and shellfish. Meat and poultry products make up an important part of our diets. And for our convenience, almost everything we eat is available in tins or frozen. But despite deep freezing and other preservation technologies, too many of our food products go to waste. Potatoes, one of the most widely cultivated and consumed food items throughout the world. This is what good quality potatoes look like when they are harvested. But a large proportion of the global potato harvest ends up looking like this long before it reaches the consumer. Just after picking, strawberries look like this but within several days they can be covered with mold. Mushrooms, soon after they are picked or packaged for sale, but within a few days they lose their shape, texture, color and taste. Insects can infest a food, rendering it unfit for human consumption. Experts estimate that up to 500 different species of insects contaminate such products as grain, nuts, fresh or dried fruits and vegetables, spices and dried fish. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, one quarter to one third of the total world food production is lost during various stages after harvest. In some parts of the world, particularly in the tropical areas, the figure reaches 50% or even more. This is the regrettable situation with bananas and some other fruits. The main reasons for these enormous losses are sprouting, destruction by insects and parasites, spoilage by microorganisms like bacteria and fungi, and premature ripening. Besides massive losses, food contamination has another major consequence, sickness and sometimes even death. Food contaminated with pathogenic microorganisms like salmonella and other bacteria causes human health problems ranging from diarrhea to more severe complications like typhoid fever. In many developing countries, matters are complicated by a lack of up-to-date food processing and storage systems. Foodborne disease often results from the way farm animals are raised. Since the mid-1940s, the world has seen an explosive growth in the mass rearing of cattle, pigs and poultry. Very often this means that a disease can spread in crowded containment more easily from one infected animal to hundreds of others. 
This problem is compounded by centralized processing, which facilitates the spread of infection from one carcass to many others. If the bacteria and other microorganisms are not destroyed when the meat is cooked, they can infect the humans who consume it. Also, they can be transferred from the raw meat to raw salads and other dishes by humans, utensils or work surfaces. In order to evaluate the question of food safety, the Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization set up a joint expert committee in 1983. The committee concluded that illness due to contaminated food is perhaps the most widespread health problem in the contemporary world and an important cause of reduced economic productivity. Some common foodborne diseases are trichinosis, toxoplasmosis, salmonellosis, campylobacteriosis, and beef tapeworm. In the United States alone, five common diseases associated with pork, chicken, and beef are estimated to cost more than $1 billion annually in medical treatment and lost productivity. Another cost of contaminated food is loss of exports. This is particularly serious for developing countries whose economies are farm-based. They supply 30% of the world imports of agricultural products, and they need these export earnings to buy equipment and other commodities from the industrialized world. But the importing countries don't want foreign insects and pests which could multiply and endanger their own crops. They don't want their environment exposed to potentially harmful insects carried on foods from other countries. So they inspect all food imports carefully and reject substandard products. Whether the foods are destroyed, sent back or subjected to expensive quarantine, the economic costs are considerable, and the developing nations, which can least afford it, are usually the ones which stand to lose the most. Fortunately, a new food processing technology has recently become available to help reduce food losses. The new technique is called food irradiation. Like heat pasteurization or deep freezing, it is a physical process for treating foods, but involves little, if any, change in temperature. Irradiation also minimizes the need for chemical additives. Instead, it uses ionizing energy, which may come from beams of electrons, as in this example, or gamma rays, as in this example. Meat, fish, fruit, vegetables and spices are exposed to low doses of ionizing energy emitted from radiation sources like cobalt-60. The gamma rays easily penetrate the food products even within their commercial packages. The effects of the rays on the foods include the inhibition of sprouting in harvested vegetables like potatoes, onions and garlic, the control of contaminating microorganisms, which cause spoilage and disease, and the elimination of insects and other parasites, which infest certain food products and can destroy them. This is the control room of a small irradiator. The monitor shows the cobalt-60 source being hoisted from the pool of water in which it is stored when not required. Inside the irradiation chamber, samples of various food products are exposed to the gamma rays. The doses are measured in grays, a gray being a unit of absorbed ionizing energy. 
after being stored for 20 weeks at 10 degrees centigrade. Unirradiated garlic and irradiated garlic. After five days of cold storage, unirradiated strawberries and irradiated berries. Mushrooms after five days of storage at 10 degrees. These potatoes were compared more than one year after they had been harvested. Apart from extending shelf life, irradiation can control bacteria and insects in a wide range of food products. Food irradiation can be applied for these purposes to a wide range of foods, including meat and seafood, spices and ingredients, cereals and fresh and dried fruits and vegetables. What is the ionizing energy that food irradiation makes use of? It is a form of the same radiant energy that we know as light and heat. Part of an enormous span of radiated energy waves that occur in nature and surround us every day. These energy waves constitute the electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light waves are a source of light and color and so important for the photosynthetic process which makes green plants grow. Infrared waves, a source of heat and a factor that promotes photosynthesis. Longer than infrared waves are microwaves. They are used in microwave ovens and in communication. Longer still are radio waves. These carry our broadcast transmissions, radio and television. At the shorter end are ultraviolet waves, useful for reducing microbial contamination in media. Beyond are still shorter waves, gamma and x-rays. They too have familiar, practical daily applications, resulting from their deeply penetrating ability. At airports, X-rays are used for inspecting luggage. Dentists check our teeth with X-rays. And radiologists use X-rays to examine our bones and internal organs. More recently, gamma ray cameras have been developed to produce sharper images for medical diagnosis. Gamma rays are also used routinely to sterilize food packaging as well as medical, pharmaceutical and cosmetic products in more than 40 countries. Altogether, 140 industrial irradiators are in operation around the world for this purpose. Food irradiation is but the latest practical application of this penetrating radiant energy. Here at this gamma ray facility in Holland, shelled shrimp has arrived for treatment. The containers were loaded onto pallets and inserted into carriers for transport to the irradiation chamber. The shrimp was pre-packaged because the energy waves can easily penetrate cardboard or wooden boxes, paper bags or plastic containers. 
Many food ingredients like spices, herbs and dried vegetables are susceptible to contamination with pathogens or infestation by insects. Irradiation is an effective way of dealing with these problems and what's more, it eliminates the need for chemical fumigation. Although a relatively new commercial process, food irradiation has been studied more thoroughly than any other food technology. Decades of research have conclusively shown that there are no adverse effects from the consumption of irradiated foods. They do not become radioactive in any way and contain no harmful chemical residues. Because irradiation has virtually no heating effect, irradiated foods stay closer to their natural state than after conventional processing. Any changes in nutritional value resulting from irradiation are comparable with those produced by other food treatment, such as heating or freezing. Three United Nations organizations have cooperated extensively in the research, development and evaluation of food irradiation technology. Over the years, the Food and Agriculture Organization, the International Atomic Energy Agency and the World Health Organization have appointed independent groups of experts from every part of the world to evaluate the results of studies of the wholesomeness of irradiated foods. All the evaluations, without exception, have been favorable. In 1976, the Joint Expert Committee recognized food irradiation as a physical process for food preservation that is comparable to heating or freezing. By 1980, the irradiation of any food commodity up to 10 kg was found to cause no hazard or introduce no special nutritional or microbiological problem. The Joint Expert Committee was able to formulate a recommendation on the acceptability of food irradiated up to a dose of 10 kg. In 1983, the Codex Alimentarius Commission published an international standard which recognized that food irradiation is safe for general application to an overall average dose of 10 kg. It also issued a recommended international code of practice for the operation of food irradiation facilities. In 1984, the International Consultative Group on Food Irradiation was established. Its main functions are to evaluate global developments in the field of food irradiation and to provide a focal point of advice to governments and international organizations. This logo is increasingly being recognized as an international symbol for irradiated foods. The need for irradiation for food preservation, disinfestation and decontamination is growing steadily. At present, over 30 countries, here marked in green, have approved irradiation of food for human consumption. Almost 20 now use the process to treat foods in commercial quantities. Currently, some 20 different food products are commercially processed by irradiation around the world. People in all walks of life are now given greater opportunities to taste and evaluate irradiated foods. It will be only a matter of time before irradiated food products are routinely available to consumers all over the world. 
This will help to assure worldwide food security and to provide the consumer with nutritious and safe food supplies at home. These people are taking part in a consumer market survey to find out if they can perceive any difference in taste, texture, or color between papayas treated by irradiation and those treated with a standard double hot water dip process. This one tastes riper. Mm -hmm. It's more, it's a fuller flavor. Yeah. Really good. Okay, chips is along with it? Yeah. The preliminary analysis of the test results showed that consumers definitely preferred the tree-ripened irradiated fruit and actually bought the irradiated papayas by more than a 10 to 1 margin. This survey conducted for the Hawaiian Papaya Administrative Committee was underwritten by GA Technologies and Radiation Sterilizers Incorporated to determine consumer reaction to papayas treated by irradiation. Why must papayas be treated at all? Papayas grown in Hawaii are subject to infestation by fruit flies. Because of the possibility of introducing these flies onto the mainland, all fruit, including papayas, must be treated to comply with strict regulations and controls maintained by both the USDA and the California Department of Food and Agriculture. Papayas used to be chemically treated with ethylene dibromide before being shipped to the mainland. Because of the potential hazard associated with carcinogenic residues, the Environmental Protection Agency banned the EDB treatment in 1984. Since then, all Hawaiian papayas shipped to the mainland have been treated by a double hot water dip process that was developed by the Hawaiian papaya industry and approved by the United States Department of Agriculture. This treatment has two major problems. Papayas must be harvested when only one-eighth ripe and treated within 18 hours. Because papayas must be picked when they are fairly mature for the hot water dip process to work properly, the fruit sent to market lacks the desirable flavor, texture, and nutritional quality of papayas which ripen on the tree longer. The hot water dip process is not 100% effective. 
The hot water dip treatment kills eggs deposited in the immature fruit, but it does not kill all the mature flies or larvae found in more mature papayas. There is an alternative treatment, and that is irradiation. The use of radiation to treat papayas has been studied and tested at the University of Hawaii for the past 20 years and was approved for use by the Food and Drug Administration in April of last year. The treatment requires exposing the fruit to ionizing radiation from an appropriate radiation source with a specified minimum dose. United States Department of Agriculture rules for Hawaiian fruit fly control by irradiation will require a 0.15 kilogram minimum dose. Is irradiation safe? A food treated by this process cannot become radioactive. The radiation passes through the food and leaves no residue. Fruits and vegetables which have been irradiated can be handled and consumed immediately. The American Medical Association, the Federal Drug Administration, the United Nations World Health Organization, and many other respected scientific organizations approved this process. However, two questions remain to be answered. Is there a significant consumer preference for tree-ripened fruit? Will consumers buy fruit labeled treated by irradiation or treated with radiation? This consumer test was set up by management associates, professional fruit marketing consultants with significant experience in conducting consumer preference studies. The fruit for this test was treated at Radiation Sterilizers Incorporated in Tustin, California one of RSI's large-scale radiation processing facilities in various United States cities. A special permit was issued, and the entire process was supervised by the United States Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. On Saturday, March 28, 1987, two Los Angeles supermarkets were used as locations to conduct the consumer market survey. At each site, a display table was set up to show both hot-dipped and irradiated papayas. There was also a table where consumers were invited to sample fruits that were treated both ways. People who participated in the market survey were asked to answer a short questionnaire about their preferences. Papaya experts from the Papaya Administrative Committee were available to answer questions from consumers, and representatives from both GA Technologies and RSI were there to respond to questions about the radiation process. To make sure that the data compiled would be unbiased and free from media attention, or pro or anti-food irradiation group influence, neither test location was announced in advance. A complete analysis of the data from the tests will be published, but three things seem quite clear. Consumers stated that they preferred the tree-ripened, irradiated fruit by a significant margin. People who bought papayas selected the irradiated fruit by more than a 10 to 1 margin. Consumers' concern about eating or buying papayas clearly labeled irradiated was almost non-existent. These test results indicate the treatment of papayas by the irradiation process has the potential to expand the Hawaiian papaya market significantly. The necessary facilities could be constructed and operational in Hawaii within one year of the decision to proceed. With the participation and cooperation of the major packers and growers, and an experienced team to administer and run the new facility, papaya irradiation could be the spark that will revitalize the Hawaiian papaya industry.